where is this headed? What are Kurzweil and these guys aiming for? It turns out is called singularity. That's the nature of singularity university. And singularity is the time at which artificial intelligence robots with biological components, information that we're giving them now through Ancestry.com and all the rest, supersede humans in brain-based intelligence, physical strength, and endurance. So we're talking about the time that the robots become more powerful and the dominant species on the planet. And Kurzweil, our predictor, <laughs> predicts that by 2039, we will be equal with these um, robot hybrids, and that by 2045, we will achieve singularity. So when we're talking about health and health freedom, it's really important to understand that the head of Google's Department of Engineering and the all of these just multiply empowered technological companies and universities and all of that have trillions of dollar, dollars. Kurzweil's won awards from MIT. He got a tech Grammy. He's got the National Medal of Innovation in Tech. And he is acknowledged for having 87% success rate in his predictions. Now, um, most uh, of the... the uh, We'll get to what I think about that, that um, soon. But um, most transhumanists, and Kurzweil in particular, are um, agnostic about the existence of a soul. And in fact, when um, Kurzweil was asked if God exists, he said, not yet. So as you'll see from a few little clips, um, it's a common transhumanist worldview. The singularity I put in 2045, uh, at that point, the non-biological intelligence that we create that year will be about a billion times greater than all biological human intelligence. There are a growing number, maybe a few hundred people, who are seeing the writing on the wall that these technologies are coming this century and they will allow humanity, if, if we, you know, as human beings, as a species, if we choose, and it's, you know, it's a critical concept, if we choose, we could build godlike, massively intelligent machines with capacities, oh God, trillions of trillions of times above ours. I mean, they, they may reach a certain level of artificial intelligence where they themselves then start redesigning themselves, right? The singularity, that, that, that idea, when, when, when a certain level, a threshold level of intelligence is reached, and then it's no longer human beings who design the next generation. They do it, and they're doing it at the speed of light, electronically, so <laughs> you know, up, up goes the, the AIQ very fast, and we just lose control. We just sit back and you know, watch, watch what happens, and, and they're the boss. Another possibility is simply living inside a, a computer uh, to where uh, we're living in a virtual world, a virtual reality. And if that's the case, there's certainly no problem with space. Uh, we'd be able to cram the entire human race into that computer over there. We are going to become gods, period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute. You don't have to participate. Well, if you're going to interfere with me becoming God, you're going to have big trouble. Then we'll have warfare. So this is very common among the uh, spokespeople for transhumanism. And they're really talking about an ultimate form of eugenics and an entirely new level of social engineering financed and developed by people who believe that calculation can replace love and that consciousness is a mere material construct. And, you know, it just, I 
I think I put a, some just some questions like, is consciousness truly just an emergent property of complex molecules? Or is it instead actually senior to our physical selves? We have fundamentally different answers to that question. What about compassion and intuition and access to multiple dimensions and love? Who would be in charge of determining what gets programmed in these algorithms if this is the worldview of the people who are in charge of the programming? And what happens to those of us who don't want to participate in this uber logic, extreme reductionist state of materialistic hubris? I recognize the value of this technology, I really do, and of the tremendous options this can offer in terms of some forms of human augmentation. And also, you know, some people wanting to live longer and be stronger and all of that. But the risks here and the worldview of those um, actually creating this present tremendous risks and it's really important that we be very um, engaged in this as as it goes and that's what we're going to spend some time this month and next week with some really strategic uh, strategic responses and ethical um, conversations about it so I know we each will choose where we are on the continuum of where we want to be with regard to human augmentation I think most people are not in favor of this notion of singularity. But the fact is there are major people, major companies, and trillions of dollars going into this notion of singularity where humans, where the notion of a post-human is the desired outcome. So when it's, um, so I'm staying uh, soul connected and I'm also really an enemy of the project and maintaining that relationship. I am a friend of your soul and an enemy of this project has allowed me to do a spiritual practice in the course of this and all of the deep dives because moving between, you know, a session where I'm in a great meditation gathering and we all feel good and that we're connected. And then I go into studying this. And if I lose that, then what's the point? I want to be able to have these worlds merge where I can maintain my understanding of our interconnectedness and at the same time really understand what it means to oppose the project and be effective in that. In that. And there's a guy, um, uh, Sun Tzu from 500 BC, Chinese guy. He's actually a military strategist and a philosopher. And he says, um, if you know the opponent and yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the opponent, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the opponent nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. And I, I believe that that is why it's so important to actually stay open enough to understand the worldview so that we can move into our strategic and leverage responses. So just they believe that the brain is the most important organ, that consciousness is in the brain and can be 3D printed, that efficiency is primary, and that singularity is desirable and closer than we think. Their goal is an androgynous male. So that's another thing to note in this gender morphing that's happening. Uh, their goal is an androgynous male with a 3D printer hooked into big pharma and our homes that would print daily doses of pharmaceutical medications that would all be um, tracked. And so our, our compliance, our response to them, it would all be tracked and fed into the capital markets to win and lose based on our behavior. This is the fourth industrial revolution and how it relates to precision health and transhumanism. And it's really the proverbial tip of the iceberg. And my intention with all this is just to help us understand how the normalization of tracking and tracing and data sharing 
and the interface of that with the new global economy and with the transhumanist agenda. So I believe that the dark horse of the new world order and the Great Reset and the GDA and all that is transhumanism and that communism and socialism and fascism are subsets of this agenda as is COVID.